Well, hello there, folks. Welcome to part two of my arrangements series in NX. So in the previous video, I showed you guys the differences between a reference set and an arrangement, and hopefully uh, that makes a lot more sense to you. In this particular video, we are going to focus more on arrangements, okay? In the previous video, I told you that arrangements can serve two functions, which is to suppress certain items, uh, and we covered that in the first video. This second video is going to show you how to create an arrangement to show an assembly in different positions, okay? So, uh, I actually have the butterfly valve assembly created over here from my previous video, but I'm going to show you the process of putting it together because the way that you constrain certain things does have a pretty big impact on how the arrangement is going to work, okay? Now, there are two particular constraints that arrangements work very well with. The first one is the distance constraint, and the second one is the angle constraint. The angle constraint is what we are going to target in this particular video. So let's go ahead and start building this uh, butterfly valve assembly. And I'm going to fly through this a little bit uh, since, you know, this isn't an assembly constraint video. Uh, but I'll go ahead and take a look here. Here's a little pop quiz question for you. What reference set do you think this is using? Hmm? Remember what I showed you in the other video? Well, it's probably using the entire part reference set because I can see the planes and the datums. Well, you can see that sure as hell, it is using the entire part reference set. Nonetheless, we're just changing it to model here. Uh, and then, you know, we'll let NX give it a default fixed constraint there, okay? So there's our first component. Let's go ahead and keep going here. Let's bring in the shaft. Okay, now the shaft in my arrangements is going to be very important because uh, this shaft is what's going to rotate, okay, and it is what will ultimately control all of the components that need to rotate, okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do a touch and a line with an infer center axis there, right? Uh, so we'll do an infer center axis between those. Uh, I'll do another touch right between this bottom face there on the shaft and this face here, okay? And this is the important one. I want to do an angle, okay? Now, the angle constraint is right here. I'll do an angle between this flat face and this flat face on the fixed body, right? I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, and it seems like the closed position is 180 degrees. That's not really important right now, but at least we can take note of that, okay? Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and hit apply since that is fully constrained. Okay, let's go ahead and keep going here. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the valve plate, which I believe is this guy right here. Uh, and again, we'll do a touch between this face here and this face here. Okay, and then we'll do an infer center axis. So this one is going to move with respect to the uh, shaft. Okay, so let's do that. And that's fully constrained. Okay. We'll add the screw here with an align lock, okay? And we actually need two of them, so we'll go ahead and bump that up to two. And we'll do an align lock here uh, between this edge here and that edge there, right? There we go. That looks pretty good. Uh, and then there's one other screw back here that's being a little stubborn, but that's all right. And this guy right here, okay? So there you go. That is uh, finished, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and add this top piece here. So let's go over to the retainer. Uh, this is just going to be, you know, two concentrics, right? Uh, there's a concentric constraint. Let me go and drop that back down to one. Uh, I'm going to do one concentric between this edge and that edge there, and then one of the edges of the hole, and this edge here. And I know SolidWorks folks have a concentric in that software, but in NX, it doesn't do what you think it does, okay? Uh, with NX, it always leaves a degree of freedom of rotation free, uh, which is why for the screws, I used an align lock. Align lock uh, locks that degree of freedom, okay? I know in SolidWorks, Concentric aligns the center lines, right? But it gives you the degree of freedom of rotation and translation along the center line, okay? But that's not what it does in NX. Nonetheless, though, I'll go ahead and hit apply, and we'll do a screw here again, right? Uh, this time I'm only going to do one because this is a pattern, okay? So again, these components here that I have are not going to move, right? Uh, the, the retainer plate and, of course, the screw that ties the retainer plate, that's not going to move, right? So I'm not really too worried about, you know, angles and distances here. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do a pattern here, and there we go. That's pretty easy. You saw how it automatically filled in. 
uh, those holes with screws. That's pretty nice, right? If you have a pattern, then NX can automatically do that for you. Okay, we're almost to the spicy part. Now what I want to do is I want to bring in the arm, right? Which was the target of a lot of the reference set and arrangement stuff in, you know, the first video. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. And this particular piece is pretty important, right? When the shaft moves, I want this arm to also move, okay? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and constrain this using a concentric here. And I'll say that this circular edge here is concentric with this edge here, right? Okay, so far that's looking pretty good. That looks pretty nice. Uh, but now I want to make this arm follow the direction of this valve plate here, okay? So uh, I do have a flat face right here that I could use, but I can't remember if I made it uh, angled or whatnot. So I'm actually just going to use the datum planes to help me constrain this. And in order to do that, you can scroll down here. And again, we're testing you a little bit, right? Do you remember about reference sets? If I want to show the datums, chances are I have to change the reference set to entire part, okay? And you can see it shows me everything that makes up this arm. And I can go over into the parallel uh, section there. And I can say that this uh, XZ plane is parallel to this face on the valve plate. Boom, just like that, okay? Beautiful. So now this thing is complete. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit OK on that, and we'll change the reference set to model to get rid of all of that mumbo jumbo, right? So now we have this assembly pretty much complete, and we can actually test our angle to see if it will change the direction of the arm, okay? And of course, the valve plate. If you go to the constraints section here, you can go and find the angle right there. You can double click on it and you know, let's say we're gonna make it maybe 90 degrees. You can see clear as day that it does automatically update, right? Very nice and very easy, okay? But here's the problem and I'm sure you can probably already see it. If you need to do this a lot or if you need to show this in that configuration, uh, at another assembly, well, that's going to be a pain in the butt, right? So that's where arrangements come into play again, okay? So in the first video, we used it to suppress the arm for valve, right? But in this video, we're going to use arrangements to show this valve in an open and a closed position, okay? And the way that we constrained it, as you just saw, is very important. That way, when we change the angle, everything that we're interested in moving moves, right? So in order to do that, I'm gonna go to the arrangements function and I'm gonna hit this little new arrangement button there. I'm gonna go ahead and give this the name, eh, you know, let's call it closed. And then we'll do another one and we'll call it open, right? So we have two arrangements and the default arrangement, like I said, we're not even gonna mess with, right? We wanna leave that one alone. I'm not going to make any of them the active arrangement yet. We'll just leave that alone. I'll go ahead and close this guy off now. Now, once you have those arrangements made, all you have to do now is go over to the constraint navigator. Okay. Now, the constraint navigator, as the name implies, shows you all the constraints that you've done so far. It's like, wow, amazing, right? And here's the angle that we are interested in right here. If you right click on that angle constraint, you will find a command called edit in arrangements. Do you see it? Go ahead and click it. Boom. In here, you can see that NX says, hey, all of your arrangements are currently sharing the same number for that angle. And of course, one of them is correct, but the other one is wrong, okay? I'm going to go over here to the closed position here, and I'm going to tell it that it's going to be specific. Even though 180 is okay, you never know. Someone might want to change it, right? But we still want to retain that closed position. So we're going to make it specific. Same thing with open, specific, okay? Closed, it seems to be 180. That's perfect. We're not going to change that. Open, however, needs to change, and we're going to tell it that that is 90 degrees, okay? So go ahead and hit enter on that and then you can go ahead and hit OK. Now, all you have to do is simply change your arrangement to the one that you are interested in. So if I go over to the arrangements function up here, 
you can see that I have the close arrangement. And if I double click it, it's going to be the same thing, right, as I have in my current display. But if I double click on the open here, you can see that it opens beautiful, absolutely flawless, right? Same thing with close, right? I can go back to close, boom, easy peasy, nothing wrong with that, okay? Now, if I add this as a child to another assembly, I can change the arrangement in that assembly. Again, we will mimic this behavior by going over to the new parent assembly here uh, and simply creating a dummy assembly. If you look at the structure of my assembly here, you can see that I have the assembly number one, which is the parent, and the child to that is the uh, butterfly valve assembly, okay? Now, if I right click on this guy and I hit replace, uh, I'm sorry, arrangement, I can go over to the open position here. You can see it opens just fine, okay? And if there was a component that is constrained to this thing, right, to this guy right here, that component will also move with it, okay? So hopefully this video gives you a little bit more understanding on arrangements, uh, capability to show an assembly in different positions. So you can do this with distances and you can do this with angles, okay? The third and final video that I will have on arrangements will concern large assembly management. And for that, uh, we will make a completely separate video. But thank you guys so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.